Hello and welcome to Metro 101, Introduction to Metropolitan Studies. My name is John Lesh and I'm the instructor for this course. On the screen in front of you is an overhead view of Provincetown, Massachusetts. This was a picture I took a few years ago from the Pilgrim Monument located in this town. Below the picture you see a number of questions. Can you identify the social, cultural, political, economic, and geographic factors influencing this place? A couple things should come to mind with Metropolitan Studies. One, it's interdisciplinary. As you can see here, the number of areas uh, that are under investigation in this image tie to the different disciplines that, that are drawn together, that are pulled in to create Metropolitan Studies. Politics, economics, geography, sociology. Also, we need to understand that a bigger picture, a bigger understanding of Metropolitan Studies reflects how many people are living in metropolitan areas. In the United States, over 83% of Americans live in metropolitan areas. Around the world, we've exceeded 50% of people are now living in metropolitan areas. So when we study metropolitan areas, we need to keep in mind that we're, we're examining, we're analyzing, we're researching the lives of over half of the world's population. As we go through the course, the best way to reach me is by email. Um, I am responsive to emails. I, um, during my office hours, which are 10 a.m. to noon, I'm very responsive. So if you need an immediate answer, try to get in touch with me during that time. I am responsive throughout the workday. So 9.30 to 4, roughly, I'll, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So if you do have time sensitive questions, try to, try to reach out during the regular business day, particularly my office hours. Um, while I do reply to emails in the evening and on the weekends, I am uh, less responsive during those times. Um, like you, I have a lot of other things going on, so the best time to reach me for a, a, um, a rapid reply would be during the business day, particularly between 10 a.m. and noon. I encourage you first off to read the syllabus. The syllabus lays out the course expectations. Um, the syllabus is as brief and streamlined as I can make it while still highlighting what you need to know in order to do well in the course. The uh, readings in the course calendar are listed at the end of the syllabus, so I encourage you to create your own calendar, your own schedule, so that you meet all of the deadlines. Uh, within the units of the, the course, you're able to work ahead, but um, it, we can't really play catch up in a seven week course. So understanding the course deadlines and expectations is important here day one. The textbooks, the Chen book and the Clay book, the information for those are listed on the syllabus. I reached out to the class over the last couple weeks to make sure that you've had a chance to order those in advance of the course. Um, this is an online course. It is a lot of independent uh, study. There's a lot of responsibility for guiding yourself through and a big part of that is making sure you have the required readings at, at the start. Again, seven weeks. It's not too condensed, but it doesn't allow us to, uh, a great deal of time to play catch up if we don't have our books to start. The um, Blackboard site again is available. It's also where you're going to find all of your assignments, uh, which we'll look at here in a minute. So again, first day, make sure you're going through the Blackboard site. You understand where the information is found um, and we'll do a, an overview here in just a moment. As far as grading goes, the course has three major types of evaluations. Um, we're broken up into three units, so each unit is a little over two weeks long. And in each unit, we're going to have chapter assignments. These chapter assignments I have here are the least challenging, meaning these are questions that are taken directly from the reading, directly from the lecture slides. So as you go through, keep in mind, I want you to do well on these. I want you to be exposed to the information. I want you to be familiar with the vocabulary. I'll read a little bit about the theorists and their ideas and their backgrounds. So again, you should be doing well on the chapter assignments because it is basic reading comprehension. These are untimed, so you're not rushed to go through them. So as you plan ahead, make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to, to read the required readings, go through the lecture slides, which support the readings, highlight some key points, and then introduce some examples, and then you can do your chapter assignments. Beginning in Unit 2, we will have a reaction essay. These reaction essays are designed to allow the class to connect current events or recently released reports with course terms and concepts. So in Unit 2, we'll be covering a number of different concepts, and then what I'll do is send you 
or I'll, on Blackboard, I'll post instructions with a link to a current event and allow you to make those course connections. One of my key outcomes, one of my key learning outcomes, one of the things I really try to, to push for is the idea that we're connecting course material with our day-to-day -day life. Um, what I really try to avoid, whether it's this class or any other class, is the idea that what we learn, we're learning in isolation and that it doesn't matter, it doesn't tie to our day-to-day -day life. So the current um, events as part of these reaction essays allow students to make these deeper applications between the class and what's going on outside of class. And then the field reports are a pretty big part of this course. Um, as you can see here, there are three field reports, one for each unit. These are the most challenging um, because they, they're incorporating the greatest level of um, depth when it comes to applications. Students are going to pick a topic from the unit, one topic from Chen, one topic from Clay, and they're going to go into their local communities and discover how these concepts play out in real life. Um, these field reports, again, I say are the most challenging. They're often also the most enjoyable because students are making the direct connections on the ground um, between the course and what's happening right outside their door. So the, the field reports, again, these are, these are the, the culmination of the units. So when we um, complete the field report, we're really showing how we're mastering the material for that unit. We're going to switch gears here for a moment and go to our Blackboard site. When you enter the Blackboard site, you're going to go, you'll, you'll go right into announcements. And all of my announcements, all of my emails are going to show up here. Let me, pardon me, let me expand my screen. All right, that view should be a little bit better. Um, again, when you come into the Blackboard site, you'll be directed to announcements, and any email I send during the course will show up here. Um, I'll leave them up here for a few days so that if you don't catch it in your uh, email inbox, you'll be able to come to the page and see um, what I've sent out. The course content folder is going to be where you find all your information. So the getting started link that we're looking at right now will be posted in here, as well as a document to help you outline your approach to the course. The course syllabus is found here. Again, one of the first things you should do when you enter is review the syllabus, review the expectations, the requirements, the deadlines. Beginning when the, the class starts, the lecture slides will be available. And if we go in here, you'll see available 526, Unit 2, which begins on June 12th. Um, those lecture slides will be available. And then Unit 3, which begins on June 30th, those lecture slides will be available at that time. If you go in here, open it up, and you'll see that each lecture ties to the um, readings that are listed at the end of the syllabus. So lecture number one. Um, Chen Chapter 1 and Clay Introduction, and then if you open this up, you'll find additional information. The next section down are the chapter assignments. So after you've read the chapter and after you've went through the slides, or you could open the chapter assignment up concurrently as you read and review the slides, you'll go in here. And the Unit 1 assignments, which will be available once Unit 1 opens, are found here. The syllabus assignment is very straightforward. It's 10 questions, again, just to, to encourage you to, to look through the syllabus and also give you some exposure to the uh, format of the, the um, chapter assignments. So I expect students to do well on the syllabus assignment. Um, keep the assignment open as you go through. Just read the syllabus carefully and you'll do well. Then for each chapter assignment, I include the different readings. Here we have Chen Chapter 1, Clay Introduction, and the corresponding lecture. So if you want to read the, the um, Chen and Clay chapters first and then do the assignment, or if you want to have everything open at the same time, that's fine. What I discourage is simply uh, answer hunting, because if you answer hunt, you may be able to do okay on the assignment, but it's not going to prepare you to do well on the current event um, reaction essays or the field reports.
And then the final folder here that you should be familiar with at the start is the field reports folder. Here you have your instructions, your submission form, which you won't be able to see until June 5th. Um, and then you have your citation requirements. We do use the Chicago manual for this class. Um, there is a link here that will allow you to properly format your author date citations. I am a, a stickler for citations, so make sure you do that carefully. Um, photo captioning. Again, this is a field report. It's a photo essay project which requires you to use your own personal photos that were taken for these reports. Um, borrowed folder, or I'm sorry, borrowed photos, old photos um, cannot be used in lieu of current photos taken for these assignments. So this is an active learning um, experience and I expect that the photos you take are going to be taken explicitly for these reports. Grade rubric is posted here and they have also posted a for, um, an example of how to format your field reports. So again, off the, off the bat I encourage you to, to carefully look through the Blackboard site create your own course calendar so that you, you keep up with the deadlines and you stay on track. The course, while condensed into seven weeks, is very manageable. As I mentioned, the course is very manageable. It's seven weeks, but if you, if you plan your time wisely, you will do well. If you follow the, the guidance and the guidelines as far as completing the required readings, completing the assignments, taking your time on the reaction essays and field reports, you will do well in the course. If you postpone and you procrastinate, like all of us, including myself, are, are guilty of at times, it's going to make the course a lot harder. So when students ask me how to do well, treat this like a job. It's seven weeks, it's summer, um, it's a condensed course, look at it as a part-time job. If you do a little bit every day, you'll do okay. If you, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, it'll make the course more difficult. Manage your time wisely. Again, we are looking at seven weeks, so we're looking at about twice the amount of work per week than you would have during a full-time semester. If you're only taking this class, that shouldn't be too much. If you're taking a couple classes, make sure that you're ready for a full-time course load. Um, ask questions. I am here to guide you through the course, so make sure that if something comes up, ask a question. I could be reached by email. We could set up a Zoom meeting for something that requires a little more um, dialogue um, back and forth, a little more um, level of depth to your questions. So know that email and Zoom meetings are both available. Um, the best way to, to do well, and, and this should be recognized through the different types of assignments in the course, is to make the, the material relevant. Again, you're not learning this in isolation. You're not memorizing terms so that you could could pick out a, a term on a multiple choice final exam. You are actively learning in this course and the field reports again will make this material relevant. And it should go without saying, but do your best. Uh, make sure that any work you submit uh, reflects what you want it to reflect. You're putting your name on this. You're putting your, your best effort forward. Make sure that what you send me is what you want me to see. So again, we'll get started. Let me know if you have any questions. Email me. Again, I am responsive throughout the workday, particularly during my online office hours of 10 a.m. to noon. And if email doesn't work, we could set up a Zoom meeting. Um, your success in the course begins at the start. Manage your time. Pay close attention to, to the details, and you'll do okay. Uh, again, build in some time every day. Treat this like a part-time job, and let me know if you have questions. So from here, we'll get started. Uh, good luck, and I'll talk to you soon.